Hello and welcome back to 5 Minute Materials, the show where we demystify everything, materials, Unreal Engine. Today we're going to be looking at light functions. Now these are, again, an, an, another very mysterious feature that a lot of people don't really realize the power of. Essentially it's a material that can be put on a light source. So you can see here uh, I'm using a lot, well, I'm using multiple light functions to uh, put my big ugly face on a building. <laughs> so we're going to look at how I actually achieve this and what we can actually use light functions for in the first place. So let's start by creating a light function. Now, the way we do this, a light function is actually just a regular old material. We're going to call this tutorial light function, tutorial light function and we are going to go to material domain and set it to light function now you'll see all the inputs are grayed out except for the emissive color which is exactly what we want what we will do let's just grab a texture let's just grab uh this pattern here definitely not a, a muse album cover let's tile this in world space so we're going to go world position masked in uh, X, Y, so from top down, and we're going to divide this by, we'll go 200 units. So each tile of the texture will be two meters. So we've now created a basic light function. And the way we actually apply this is we are going to go, let's go to our directional light. So like our sun light, and we're going to go to the light function, light function material. And we are going to put this on there. Now you can see straight away, we've got some wacky, some wacky stuff happening. So what this is doing is it's actually choosing places to emit from the, the lighting pass from this light. So these bits in here, those are the exact same as though, you know, the directional light wasn't visible at all. So if we actually go to directional light, we go to uh, effects world, if we turn it off, this part here isn't changing color, like in, in the middle. You can see if we go right here, we turn it off, nothing changes except for the bits that were lit. It's lit. <clears throat> so you might be thinking, hey, this is kind of a, a really obscure and a really niche light function. What can we actually use it for? Uh, and I'm glad you asked. One thing that I use light functions for is to kind of fake cloud shadows. So let's just go back into this one. Um, instead of using these, these scary fellas, we're going to grab some noise. We're still going to top down project it. I mean, you could project it from the light source itself, but just for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to do this. What we will also do is make a, a duplicate of this one with a different tiling. I don't know, maybe 800 or maybe like 2000 or maybe 2731 uh, and then we are going to add these together and then we're going to divide it by two and then we're going to apply some contrast now this is kind of similar to a height lerp which i have a, a video on also if you've seen my video about particle materials where we kind of do some some noise stuff and make like fire particles this is essentially the same method the the other thing we're going to do which i've forgotten to do is actually pan we're going to use a panner so we're just going to chuck some panners in here um, this would be like the direction that you want the clouds to to move we're just going to say 0.1 and 0.12 and like 0.002 here i don't know I feel like these should be going before the divide, but I, we can edit out me fucking everything up. It's no biggie. Final compilation. Oh, someone should make a, a movie, a horror movie about Unreal Engine called Final Compilation. All right, so now if we look at our scene, you can see we have these clouds rolling overhead. They're very dark and they're also quite contrasty, not very realistic, so we can reduce the contrast a bit, you know, like this. The other thing we could do is add a, a clamp or like a reverse multiplier. I'd probably go with the reverse multiplier just to keep those nice gradients. So we will get this. 
we're going to one minus it to turn it upside down. Then we're going to multiply it, which is going to change the kind of luminosity scale of it. And then we're going to turn it back up the right way after we've multiplied it, which means as this approaches zero, it'll kind of approach like maximum brightness. So now if we have a gander, as this goes to zero, the like the cloud strength gets reduced. Yeah, I mean, look, there, there you go. That's it. That's that's one thing that you can use a light function for. So another thing that we can use light functions for is for point lights or spotlights or anything like that. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to darken our scene a little bit all the way. And we are going to grab a point light. I'm just going to yeet it into our scene. Let's make it like really bright just for the sake of, you know, being able to see what it's actually doing. We have a, a point light, which is a light that emits from a point. Well, wow. let's grab another material. This one's going to be called tutorial uh, point light function. And what we'll do is just, again, look up light function. I'm just going to yeet that onto there. Uh, it's not doing anything at the moment because it's an invalid material type. So we're going to go to uh, material domain light function. So if we just put in a texture using like the standard, you know, text coordinates with a point light, it will actually kind of radiate it outwards. Using like this sphere is a pretty good approximation of, you know, what's going to happen. Uh, imagine that this sphere is like a lampshade that is on the the point light. And so, yeah, you can see that's like the kind of it's 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 like a, a sideways sphere by default. So you're probably thinking, OK, what what uh, again, what can this actually be useful for? Well, I'm glad you asked. Something that I really like to do with my my point lights is to get a noise node or even use a noise texture if you are so inclined. It's probably more performant to use a noise texture that you're already, you know, sampling elsewhere. Uh, and we are going to use a, a constant of 0, 0, 0. This will actually just be a, a 0, 0. And then we are going to add time to this coordinate. Essentially, what we're doing is we're using a texture uh, and we're kind of reading from a single point on that texture. If both the X and Y axis are the same kind of scale, then we're just going to keep repeating over the diagonal. Whereas if we make one slightly more than the other, we're going to end up, you know, doing this and it like will kind of loop back. You get what I mean? We'd end up covering the whole texture. So we are just going to very slightly, we're just going to offset one of the, the directions before we chuck it into the, the adder. So this is like a, this is like a ghetto panner. This is like what a panner is under the hood. And then we're just going to have a multiply here, which is going to be our flicker speed. And we've just got a random noise texture. Once again, we hit save compile. We wait like 50,000 minutes. And now we have a look at our, our finger. Uh, then you can see we kind of get this random flickering like a candlelight or like a campfire. And this is all just being done on the GPU, you know, in the material itself, rather than needing to like do this in blueprint or something. Now, obviously, if you didn't want it to, you know, go all the way down to, you know, zero, we could do some math after this point. We could either do like an inverse multiplier or we could do uh, like a clamp. Um, I'd probably go with like an inverse multiply. So like one minus multiply. One minus, and this is the flicker intensity, flicker intensity, and then put that into the emissive color. We're gonna chuck that at one for now. And now if we scale this to zero, the flicker intensity will not be there. Um, so if we put it at like 0.5, you can see that like the, the strength of it is quite weak which is separate from the, you know, the speed. So maybe we want it to like flicker really rapidly, kind of like how a candle would flicker versus like a big bonfire. And then obviously we might not want it to be as kind of violent to kind of preserve people's eyeballs. Now all we'd need to kind of complete this effect would be to make the light, uh, you know, red, red-ish, orange-ish, uh, and just get like some bloody, I don't know, fire particles. All right, ta-da, ta-da, we have a, a raging a raging fire using light functions. And it just, you know, it, it gives it a bit more life. That's another use for the, the light function. Now, you're probably wondering, okay, how did you do this? How, how, how does this work? 
This is a Prismatica experimental experiment, which I would not recommend because it's very costly. So light functions can only be in black and white. They're only like a grayscale zero to one value. You can't put color in a light function, at least not right now. Maybe they will in the future or something. So what I did in this case is I just put down three identical lights, one for each color, and then in each of their light functions, just masked out, you know, the red of this texture and the, the green of this texture and the blue of this texture. You, 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 you get it. And that kind of creates like a, a projected image, which again, it's just, a, it's a bit of fun. The lighting complexity is off the uh, the Richter scale, the, the lighting Richter scale. But I mean, you know, if, if you really needed a projector and, you know, it was like a small room and there wasn't much going on, then you could probably get away with doing this with, you know, like a, a video or something. The benefit being that like, if this was just a decal, then a decal obviously can't cast shadows. Decals kind of go through stuff. Uh, and so if we look, you know, behind here, uh, there's a little bit of like bleed through and whatever. I think that's actually from this one, which isn't casting shadows. But like if we get a, a box and we yeet it over here, the box will cast a shadow <laughs> over this glorious masterpiece, which, you know, might be handy. You even get a little bit of chromatic aberration for free. Wow. I think that's just because there's, yeah, they're slightly misaligned. If you want to kill your computer, then this might be exactly the thing for you. Uh, so anyway, look, there's not really much else to talk about. That's kind of what light functions can be used for. Basically, it's just a material that gets projected from the light source, meaning that, you know, if you're using fake cloud coverage. You don't actually have to render like volumetric cloud bullcrap and have like clouds in the scene that are casting really long shadows and whatever. And they're also really useful for, you know, things like torches and candles. You could even like kind of fake shadows being cast. So like you could put like a window texture on a spotlight rather than actually having it cast shadows, which can be expensive for, you know, lights in the scene. You could just have like a fake window, you know, what are they called? Window, you know, these ones. Um, you could just fake them and not actually have it casting shadows in the scene, but you still get that like effect of it casting shadows. So that's it for today. I hope that you learned something new. If you do have any questions or you want to learn more about Unreal Engine, join our Discord, which is linked in the description. If you do want to see me do this kind of thing live. Uh, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash prismaticadev and join in. We stream like basically every day for many, many hours working on Prismatica and filming videos like this. And last but not least, if you do want to support monetarily, you can do so for as little as $1 per month in the Patreon, which is linked in the description. Thank you to all the existing patrons. You guys are pretty cool. And with that, we say goodbye. Goodbye.